Hello, everyone. Welcome to Breaking Ground. Today we have Doron and Ariel, who will be speaking about how they found PII in public RDS snapshots in their talk titled, Oops, I Leaked It Again. Before we get started, we want to thank some sponsors. Without them, the help of the sponsors, donors, volunteers, this would not be possible. They're located out in the vendor area, but just to list a few, we've got Conductor One, Toyota, PlexTrack. Be sure to stop by their booths. A uh, quick note on cell phones, please make sure that they are silent and not interrupting. And with that, I will hand it over Thank to you. Doran and Ariel. Can you hear me, right? Uh, so thank you for coming. Let's survive hours of uh, this conference. Uh, today we are going to talk about how we found PII in public RDS snapshot, and as we called it, oops, I leaked it again. So this was Brittany, and this is us. My name is Doron, and this is my colleague Ariel. Uh, we are both uh, security cloud researchers at Mitiga. And today we are going to talk, as the name of the presentation suggested, about how we found a PII in RDS snapshot. We are going to talk a little bit about what is RDS, what is RDS, what is this, uh, is the service, what is the concept of RDS snapshot, and specifically public snapshot. We are going to talk about what is the problem with having public uh, snapshot over there, and also show you how attackers can exploit it. We are going to talk about what we did in our research, how we uh, mimic an attacker uh, technique and uh, did it at scale, and also share with you some cool uh, examples of real cases, of real DBs that we found out there with uh, real information. And at the end, we are going to share some uh, ways to detect and mitigate this, uh, this risk. But before we start, we want to show you some of these cool cases that I was talking about. So these are some d databases that we found out there, and there shouldn't be uh, public. So for example, here we can see a table of one of those, of those dat databases that includes a username, user password, email, the gender, the phone number of the user, the marital status, a token of password, ID number, and more, and more, and more, and more. Oh yeah. So, let's start. What is RDS? Amazon Relational Database Service, as known as RDS, is a platform as a service that simplifies database management in the cloud. There are many great features. For example, easy database management. This service automates time-consuming administrative tasks, such as software patching, hardware provisioning, and more. All of these allow companies to focus on application development. Another example is high availability. By replicating databases across multiple availability zones, this ensures that your, that your applications deal with infrastructure failures without downtime. This service was launched in 2009, and nine years later, in 2018, Stack Overflow published an article about the incredible growth of Amazon RDS. Actually, in these days, this service is widespread in the cloud. What is RDS Snapshot? So, Amazon RDS Snapshot is a point-in-time copy of an Amazon RDS database, database, and the snapshots are stored in Amazon S3 bucket. Snapshot can be taken automatically, like every hour, every day, and so on. Snapshot also can be taken manually by click. RDS Snapshot actually backups the entire DB instance. It's not like select queries on all the tables. RDS Snapshot also contains the metadata, and you can restore the DB using RDS Snapshot. And also, RDS Snapshot is a resource that you can share. You can share it inside your account, outside your account, and even publicly. Why to share a snapshot publicly? Maybe because you want to share public data, maybe because you want to share a template DB to an application, or maybe you just want to share a snapshot with someone without dealing with roles and policies. It's so hard sometimes. So, Public RDS snapshot is a great feature. What can go wrong? As all of us already knew, of course, databases can contain sensitive data. Sensitive data can be personal identifiable information, is known as PII. If, if threat actor gets their hands on this type of data, it can be a disaster to your organization. They can publish it, 
they can blackmail you using this data and so on. Sensitive data also can be secrets. Secret can be password, token, access key, and, and so on. With this type of data, the actor can exploit your environment. Based on this, public snapshot with sensitive data to public, even for just a few minutes, it's a really bad practice. Now, we understand it, but we don't feel it. Think about that. How easily you can imagine someone in your workplace who publishes a snapshot publicly for a few minutes. It might be said, what's the worst that can happen? And even may think it's not an issue they need to report. And even after that, even after you publish snapshots to public, if you want to investigate what exactly happened when the snapshot was public, there is a major lack of visibility in AWS CloudTrail that Doron will describe later in this presentation. To you. So now we know what is, what is RDS, what is RDS snapshot, but let's see how it can be exploited by attackers. Here you can see an illustration of an attacker looking for uh, sensitive data. But really, adversaries can easily uh, clone publicly RDS snapshot. The only thing they need to do is to use two API calls that leaves no forensic traces. You won't be able to see it in the logs, but they actually clone the, uh, the snapshot. Also think about it that Traditional scans, like scans for open ports or vulnerabilities, will allow the attacker to understand uh, some information about your organization, but not actual uh, access to the data. With public RDS snapshot, if, for example, you expose it by mistake, and the attacker was able to scan your premises and understand that there is public RDS snapshot at this time, they have actual data to the actual access to the data itself. Let's see a demonstration how easy, how easy it is to, to do so. The only thing you need to do is to use the describe DB snapshot API call to include uh, the flag include public, and you will get an output of all the public RDS snapshot in the specific region. This is the information, all of the snapshots that are there. Now, the only thing that they would need to do is to copy one of the DB snapshot identifier as they wish, and this is a unique identifier for each DB snapshot and to pass it as the input of the next uh, API call, which is copy DB snapshot. Here you need to mention the DB, target DB snapshot, free Britney and the region. And a few moments later, you will have a clone of this DB snapshot in your environment. Here you can see some information about the newly created uh, DB snapshot in your environment. You can see the engine, which is MySQL. You can see the master username which is root in this case, but sometimes it could be indicative of the organization that this uh, snapshot is belong to. Another thing that is important to know that it doesn't matter what the owner of the, of the snapshot or the owner of the instance, the database itself, do with uh, the resource now. For example, they delete it. It doesn't affect this snapshot. You now own the data. You have the data in your organization. So what we try to do, we try to mimic what an attacker does, but we try to, we try to do it in, at scale. Our hypothesis for this research was that attackers can scan uh, for the AWS premises and clone those uh, snapshots that were exposed only for a few minutes. So that's what we did. We built an AWS native technique. We use AWS Lambda function, step function, and bot treat for the automation of the API calls. And uh, we created uh, this bot that runs uh, free, uh, every hour and looks for the newly created RDS snapshot. The overall, the high, the high, level, pro, the high level goal of this uh, bot was to scan and clone those uh, newly created snapshots and extract the data automatically. So let's focus on those processes. This is the overall process. On the left-hand side, you can see the process that runs every hour. It's an hourly scan and it's rep responsible to scan and clone new snapshots. The, on the right side, you can see the uh, process that runs every six hours, and this is like the offline process, and it's responsible to go through all the snapshots that we have copied uh, to prepare them, uh, to prepare the, to create the instance out of the snapshot and to extract the data for manual an analysis later. Let's talk a little bit about the first one. So this is an hourly scan, as we said. We run an hourly scan for all the snapshots that were created in all the available regions, which is most of the region except of four regions. And for this, we use the describe DB snapshot API call. 
Then we iterate through all those regions, and we clone uh, the, snap, the newly created snapshot in the last hour since the last run to our premises, to our AWS account. At this stage, we also maintain a state file that uh, includes all the snapshots that we have cloned, so we make sure we don't clone the same snapshot in the next run. For this, we use the copy DB snapshot API call. This is an example of uh, the function that we use. This is actually the function that looks for the newly created uh, DB snapshots. The second process, now at this point, we have the DB snapshot, uh, the, the newly created DB snapshot in our AWS account. So we don't need to run this process every hour, for example. We run it as less frequent. We run it every six hours. And what we do in this process is, first of all, we make a list of all the newly created snapshots that we don't have databases for them. Then we, again, iterate through all the regions uh, that available. We get the unique ARN for each snapshot that we later pass to create the instance. In order to create the DB instance, we use the restore DB instance from DB snapshot. It's another API call. Once we have the DB instance ready to, to work with, we reset the master password, and otherwise we cannot access the data inside the DB, the DB itself. Then we move to deal with the data itself. This step is the analyze and extract. We automatically extract the DB schema, which are the table, uh, inform some information about the tables themselves in the, in the database. Uh, it includes, uh, and also the DB content. We take this content and the information about the, uh, the DB schema and we store it uh, at S3. And of course, we later on delete the, and when we got the, the data itself, we delete, to cut, de delete the database to cut charges. Let's talk a little bit about how we, what we do with the data itself. So we created an automated process that helps us to highlight, highlight tables that contains in high probability uh, PII. What we do in this stage, as we said, we extract the table name, which could be indicative of what there is inside the table, the table schema, which is the name of the columns of this table, that could be, could be also indicative, and first 10,000 rows of each table. We save everything in S3 as CSV, and then we use PySpark in order to slice and dice the data. Before we, we move on and we select those candidates that we would like to manually uh, analyze, we do another step to reduce the number of candidates. We filter for only the tables that are non-empty, which has some, at least some rows, and we search the column, we search the column names of, the, of, the, of those tables against the list of indicative keys. This is the, an example of what keys we were looking for. So these are uh, PII-related keys. It includes password, phone, account, IP address, document, secret, and so on. Now we are going to show you some cool examples that we found in the wild. Cool. Now let's talk about our findings. Before we start, I want to define our research time frame. Our research was conducted over 30 days, from middle of September 22 to middle of October 22. From now, I'm, I'm going to call this time frame our research month. To begin, I want to share with you three nice examples about uh, public RDS snapshots we found. The first example is a snapshot that, that was exposed on the research month. The DB was created in March 22. The snapshot was taken in August 22. And this DB look, looks like car agency DB. This table, for example, looks like car rental orders table. Each row is, a, is an order, and as you can see, each row contain full name, phone, email, car model, date, sales consultant name, and the occasion. For example, father birthday, marriage, festival, and so on. The second example is a snapshot that was exposed for less than four hours, just for a few minutes or hours. What, what's the worst that can happen? This DB looks like dating app DB. The DB was created in April 16. The snapshot was taken in October 22, more than six years later. This table, for example, looks like the user's table. Each row is a user that contain the name, password, email, gender, birthday, ethnicity, link to an image, user description, and more and more. Another table in this DB, for example, contains the private messages. Now, just take a few seconds 
to imagine what could happen if this snapshot got into the wrong hands. The third example I want to show you is an example with technical data. This snapshot was exposed all the research month. The DB was created in July 15, and the snapshot was taken in September 22, more than seven years later. This DB looks like mobile phone apps company DB. This table, for example, is the devices table. Each row is a device that contains the device ID, the actually MAC address, user ID, the actually email, the device model, the app ID that was installed on this device, and the access token. With this data, the actor can impersonate a user, of course. So, now you can say, okay, you search in all of the regions for entire month, and you found three nice examples. It's pretty bad, but it's not a phenomenon. So, let's talk about it. Let's talk about how prevalent is this issue. In our research month, we saw approximately 2,800 public RDS snapshots. In this graph, you can see how many public RDS snapshots we saw per region. The most common region, of course, is US East, US East 1, because this is the default region. But also, you can see here that this phenomenon appears in all of the regions. In this graph, you can see how many public RDS snapshots we saw per DB engine. We saw Postgres, Oracle, SQL Server, and of course, the, the most common DB engine we saw is MySQL. And it's not surprising because of the popularity of this engine. But now we can say, maybe all of these public RDS snapshots are supposed to be public. So let's talk about that. In our research, we try to, to deal with this issue. And we try to think how we can clean the data. In order to do that, we applied two filters. The first filter was we filtered out all the, all the public RDS snapshots that were published by accounts that publish a lot of RDS snapshots. Think about that. If an account publish a snapshot, for example, every week, it might be part of their product or part of their workflow. So it might be not interesting. In this filter, we actually filtered out approximately 2,000 of public RDS snapshots, a lot. The second filter we, we did is filter out all the public RDS snapshots with boring keyword in their name. Boring keyword can be test, template, public, and so on. In this filter, we actually filtered out just 70 public RDS snapshots, not much. Now, we had 650 public RDS snapshots, and these snapshots is our potential to contain sensitive data. From now, I'm going to call these snapshots interesting snapshots. Now I want to share with you some insights based on the metadata of the inter this, these interesting snapshots. This graph shows how many interesting snapshots we saw every day. We can see a change, of course, but also we can see here that this phenomenon is a stable phenomenon. We didn't catch a unique peak or something like that. This graph shows how many snapshots were public for each number of exposed days from 1 to 30. As you can see, public RDS snapshots that were exposed more than two days and less than 30 days are anomalies. In the right side, you can see approximately half of the interesting snapshots that were exposed all the research month. month. It means maybe they're supposed to be public, maybe someone published them and then forgot about them. In the left side of the graph, you can see the other half of the snapshots, of the interesting snapshots, that were exposed just for one or two days, just for a few hours. It means maybe someone published them by mistake, maybe someone just, uh, just want to share them for a few hours with someone. In all of this graph, there is another case that the publisher of the, of the snapshot is a threat actor. If, the, if this threat actor try to be discreet as possible, he, um, he published for a few hours, and if not, they published for a long time. This is my favorite graph. Every snapshot, of course, was taken from an RDS DB. In this graph, we can see how many DBs were created each month. 
Most of the DBs were created in September 22 or October 22. And it makes sense. This is our research month. But also, we can see that the number of the DBs that were created before that are more than a few, is more than a few. Why is it interesting? Let's think about that together. Let's take, for example, a DB that was created in 2015. If this DB was created seven or eight years ago, and this DB is still in use that seven years later, it's still relevant, and, and an admin took a snapshot from this DB and published it, the probability that this snapshot contains sensitive data is higher than snapshot that based on a DB that was created a few months before. Now, let's talk about our insights based on the content of the interesting snapshots. As Dawn described earlier, from the snapshots, we extracted the, the data and to CSV files, and we stored it to S3 bucket. After we did that, we built, as Dawn described, we built a list of interesting keywords to search in column names. Here you can see a sample of that, secret, billing, IP, phone, token, and so on. What we actually did is to search these keywords in the column names just in non-empty tables, just in tables with data. Here you can see the, the matches to these keywords. Actually, we found a lot of matches. All in all, we found approximately 5,800 columns with an interesting keyword in their name and with data. When we reduced it to different RDS snapshots, we found 171 public RDS snapshots that in high probability contain sensitive data just in one month. Now we can agree that this issue is a prevalent issue. Thank you. So as Ariel said, now we can agree that there is a risk there. Uh, even, even though you don't know uh, you didn't know that this could be a risk, that publishing RDS snapshot even for five or 10 minutes could expose the data out there, now we understand the risk. And you might ask yourself, how, what, what can you do as an organization to detect this issue or to mitigate this, this risk? So as I say, you might ask yourself, how can I know if someone, for example, copied my public snapshot? Sounds pretty straightforward, right? So you can't. During our research, we were surprised to understand that there are no logs about RDS snapshot if they are public. For example, if someone tried to touch your public uh, uh, snapshot, for example, copy it or create an, insta or create an instance out of it, you will, will not be able to detect it. It's, there is no log records about it in CloudTrail. And this was even more surprising because we know other services in AWS, for example, in EC2, if you create an EBS, which is uh, the disk you attach to an EC2, and you publish a snapshot of this CBS publicly, and someone, for example, copy this snapshot or create a disk out of it, you will get a log entry about it. You will know that someone from a third party account is trying to do something with your, your EBS, and you will be able to know if this account is related to your organization or not, and if not, it's probably an attacker. But in this case, there, is, there are no log records, which means you are completely blind once you uh, publish it, either mistakenly or not. But there are some things that you can still do in order to detect some, some actions around a snapshot that went public. So we divided it into two sections. First, for the first one is current state, to understand if right now you have public snapshot. And the second one is historical, historical check. Let's talk about the current state, what you can do. So first of all, you can use the AWS API. Like the attacker did, what you can do is to use two API call. The first one is describe DB snapshot, and the second one is describe DB snapshot attributes. Here you can see an example. What you need to do is to describe all the DB snapshot in your organization of type manual, because you, do, you want to see only the ones that, you, uh, that are not automatic uh, snapshots, and to query for the DB snapshot identifier, which is a unique identi identifier for each uh, snapshot. Later on, you take this list of DB snapshot identifier, you input it to the next call, which is described DB snap snapshot attri attributes, and you will get all the attributes of all the DB snapshots in your environment. 
There you can you will be able to see if the DB snapshot is publicly available. Another thing that you can do is to use AWS config, and the AWS config is a tool provided by AWS, which gives you the current state of your uh, visibility of the, uh, your organization in any given moment. You can know what resources you have and what are the, the configuration of the resources. This tool comes with pre-built rules by AWS, but you can also build your own rules. One of those uh, pre-built rules is RDS snapshot public prohibited. Once you have enabled this rule to your, for your organization, you will see that if you have any uh, non-compliant resources, like in this uh, screenshot. Another thing that you can do is to use the AWS Trusted, Trusted Advisor. Uh, this is another tool provided by AWS, and it overlaps some rules with the AWS config. Uh, what differs this tool from AWS config, among others, is that you cannot customize the rules. You have a, set, a set, certain set of rules that you choose uh, either to use or not, but you cannot build your own rules. Under security, there is a rule that looks for RDS public snapshot. And this is uh, information about this rule. Now let's talk about an historical check. So it's important to know if right now you have public RDS snapshot, but it's also important to know if, if you had in the past public RDS snapshot. So what you can do in this case is to look for the modified DB snapshot attribute event in your CloudTrail and to see if uh, in, the, uh, in the time that you store those, those logs, any RDS snapshot went public. To do so, you need to search for this event, as I said. The attribute name would be restore, and under values to add, you will see all. In the AWS documentation, they specifically mention to not use the all statement under this uh, store because it exposed your public RDS snapshot to everyone. And this is a mistake that actually, it happens a lot, as we saw. What about mitigation? So this is for detection, to understand if you have or had snapshots that are public. What can you do in order to mitigate the risk? So first of all, which is quite straightforward, and it's true to other risks, not just this one, is to employ least privileged permission practice, which means give only the permissions that are needed to perform certain job. Either it's a role or a user, give it the permission that they need to, to, uh, to do their job and not more. The second, the second mitigation step is more specific to our case, to encrypt your snapshot with KMS key. If you encrypt your snapshot with KMS key, what we found is you, are, you won't be able to share this, K, this, uh, public, this snapshot to the public. You will be able to share this snapshot with other AWS accounts, whether in your organization or, or outside of it, but not to the public. And this should help you to reduce the risk and to uh, prevent mistakes. So to summarize, let's talk about what we had today. So we discussed about RDS, what is the concept of RDS and RDS snapshot. We emphasize the, the risk and the problem. We, now we know that there is a risk that uh, before that we didn't know. It's uh, very important to understand that if you expose the snapshot even for a few minutes, it's probable that someone took this, took this snapshot and can use the information. We also know that there is a major visibility gap. AWS doesn't provide you any information about public RDS snapshot if anyone from third party account ever copy or create an instance out of them. And also we, sh we showed you some cool examples. But you may ask yourself what now, what you should, you should do now. So we we'll recommend you to do the following. The first thing, which is the easiest, by tomorrow you can check, do I have public snapshot? You can use any of the steps that we recommended. You can use the AWS config, the AWS Trusted Advisor, or use the API to understand if right now yes, you have public snapshots. In one week, because this is a little bit more complicated, to check your logs. Check your CloudTrail cloud logs. You can do it through the console or through anywhere else you have your logs. To check for this modified DB snapshot attribute event and to search if you had a snapshot that went public. If, if the snapshot was public and you didn't know about it, that it includes information that shouldn't be out there, you should treat it as an incident because someone might touch it. And the last thing is to apply the mitigation step that we recommended you, and specifically to encrypt your snapshot. As we said, if you encrypt the snapshot, you prevent mistake. No one will be able to share it with, uh, with the public. Thank you. Uh, this QR code, QR code leads to our uh, blog, 
which includes more information. And of course, we share a lot of uh, details. So you can see everything, uh, all the recommendations, uh, the mitigation and detection uh, methods. So it's uh, very useful, uh, useful resource for you. And uh, thank you. Thank you. Do we have any questions? I'll get, I'll get the fun question first. Um, what was the most interesting thing that you all found uh, within there in terms of the relationships and the naming conventions? What was like the most concerning, the most interesting thing you found while kind of scavenging through this data and everything naming else? Naming convention of, of like a table or a DB or? Yeah, just in terms of the combination of the keys and all the data points where you're like, oh, that's really concerning. Why is that there? So I think the most uh, interesting uh, examples were the one that we showed you. For example, this dating app, it was like very interesting and we actually could we didn't share it, of course, but we found like the real conversation between users in this dating app, which is quite of shocking. And of course, this, this shouldn't be public. So this is, was like the, one of the most uh, amazing uh, results. But we found other examples which are not PII, for example, production servers of really big retail company uh, around the world that we can see all their stocks, uh, all their models, like a lot of information that shouldn't be exposed. Uh, So the lack of um, the copy database snapshot logs in CloudTrail is a feature according to AWS? Uh, so we co contact, uh, I'm not sure if I said it, but we did talk with the AWS and they acknowledged that this is like a lack of visibility they, they should uh, uh, bridge at some point, but not yet. It was like last year and there are no, no logs yet, but hopefully sometime soon. Do we have? Any of the companies? Uh, so I'm not, did we try? No, no, we didn't. The answer is no. The answer is no. We thought about it, but we didn't. Anything else? To copy the snapshots, did they need um, any sort of access or like you need to be able to read it and write it or you can copy with, without that? To copy the snapshot, if for, like you mean by mistake, if you are a user within an organization, to make ah to copy a snapshot is already public. Yes. No, no permission. That's the so you don't that's, need anything in that organization. No, because it's public, and that's the whole thing that people they don't know that they even share it publicly, and from this moment onwards, this is for everyone's eyes. Everyone can see it. They just need to the the thing that is like the hardest is, as we said, we found like three thousand new public RDS snapshot over this month. And what we try to do to build like a machine that helps us to find the one that are interesting. This was like the most, uh, the hard part of this uh, research. And for attacker, they need either to build something similar or to understand by the name and convention of the DB or the user, the master user, if this is a target that they would like to target. No, 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 no. <laughs> Anything else? Hope right. you enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you.